I said, I'll come, I'll come right back to you as soon as I get the boat no more. When I got back to the phone, nobody's there. I hung on, I hung on, I hung on. I didn't realize she hung up. I figured she had found the child. So I went on out crapping. I thought she'd found it. Well, I found out later, you know, she didn't know. But anyway, they tried to make it like to the jury. I didn't even care nothing about them. They, she testified, she called me. Well, you can see who called who. Now that was going to the jury. <laughs> what about that DNA? I mean, Frank Stems used to travel me off and on a little bit. He was my son's uh, wife's father. And I made it, I told him a long time ago, I don't like people crabbing me, not let them work with me. But I didn't want him to fit me where I crab, how I crab, and what kind of aid I use, because I catch more crabs than the rest of the crabbers. I worked hard to work. And he promised me he would never reveal the locations I crab, or what kind of bait I use, or anything else, or how many crabs I was getting to anyone. Anybody in that type of business feels the same way. They might not want to admit it, but they do, because it's a real competition business, you follow me? Okay. Uh, you see what Frank Stems testified to in trial? A special location? Mm hmm You know who put them words in his mouth, don't you? The state's attorney did. Here's Frank Stems' deposition. And what's the prosecutor say here? He's asking Frank Stems. You said, you told us that when he dropped those traps in this, I called, I'll call a secret location. He's talking, I'll call it a secret location. The prosecutor put the words in his mouth for later on in trial. Because this man, he's all nervous. He don't got his health together. He's putting words in his man's mouth to stay later in trial. And just for better, a better phrasing, follow me? Yes. So you see what he testified in two good trial? He's but he changed it from a, 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 a secret location to a, a special location. My attorney knew all this stuff and didn't object. Didn't show him to walk. Well, here's your, uh, here's your, uh, here's your deposition where Mr. Pruner, the, the state's attorney, put these words in your mouth. That's why all this is supposed to be brought out in trial. Because all this is certain down to evidence gives the person found guilty. Okay. Let's see where we go now. going on 10 years and here for a crime I didn't do. You've been here 10 years now? Oh, I got cancer. Yeah, you told me you, you had, uh, you have colon cancer. Yeah, right. And why don't you let the doctors operate, Willie? I don't want to get into it on camera. Okay. Because I'm not going to say anything bad about the Department of Correction. Okay. But, uh, when I turn it off. These people operate on me, I'll die first. Naturally. Do they give you medicine to, for the pain? Yeah. Oh, these, they're wonderful now. They want to operate on me, but I won't let them. Oh, you won't let them. They begged me several times to let them operate on me. I won't let them do it, but I got my own reason. Sure. Detective Frank told uh, Hope in the express hearing that the Detective Hurley that read me my random rights. Well, here's his own deposition. Detective Brackett's deposition. I consider him a suspect of the girl's disappearance. Why? Because he found out I've been convicted in the past on sexual battery charges on okay. children. Oh, so he found out you were a sexual predator, so that's why he came down on you when that when little Amanda went missing? Right. Oh, boy. Did they? Well, you don't know what I went through. I started a, a few minutes later, after they got my face, started spitting in my face, had me back up against the wall, and I couldn't move both of them in my face like that, screaming and telling me I had done something to the child, wanting to know where her body was at. I said, hey, I want an attorney. And I kept asking for an attorney. They kept telling me, you don't need one, you don't need one. They kept on and on. I kept asking for an attorney. They kept telling me, you don't need one. And, 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 I, and they finally said, you're not getting an attorney. And that's when I said, well, I'm not talking to you anymore. You arrest me and let me go. That's when they took me. Well, first he says, I'm going to get you. I don't care what I have to do. I'm going to get you. That's when they took me into another room, put me in a jail cell, and told me to strip, take all my clothes off. 
I thought I was arrested because I told them, I told them they arrest me and let me go. Oh. I couldn't handle no more of their abuse. They had spit all over my face the more they were spitting. Anyway, you see it right here? We went back into the room, a little, I believe it was a little, uh, it was at that point, maybe shortly thereafter, I advised him his right. I advised him his right. He didn't say to take the hurley. He said, his sworn deposition. I advised him of his rights. He said, in his press hearing, to take the hurley read me my rights. There ain't nobody read me my rights to this day. I kept asking for an attorney. Depositions don't lie. You see how I'm shaking. Yeah, Willie, really, because this is this is a serious crime. I know you you have to shake. This is death row. This stuff is serious. Uh, see right here. See, I couldn't read it all back then, I, and I said, read it. It's a detective practice saying this to me. Uh, no, he's saying this is what he says when he reads the person their rights or or, or whatever they're giving up. Yeah. Which I done told them they could search my truck. They never asked me about my boat. If they had, I'd say, charge, charge it. I had nothing to hide, but they never asked me about my boat, even though they put it down, I did. Okay, on another form now, he asked me, uh, could he search my home? I said, yeah, as long as you give me permission to be there while you search my home, because I don't want nobody in my home when uh, my home is being searched, because I got too much stuff I worked hard for, for a little this and a little that to walk out the door. I'm not saying that God's going to do it, but I'm going to be there to protect my interests. He says, as long as, you, as long as you give us permission to search your home, you can be there. So I went, I put my initials in the box like they told me to. Initials, initials the box that applies to and sign it. That was on both forms now. Which you got the forms. I sent you a copy of it. Were, were you able to read that, Willie? Huh? Were you able to read back then? No. They read it to you? I couldn't read. Oh. Okay. You see where it says initial the box that it applies to. Then sign it down the bottom. When you sign it down the bottom, you only are uh, 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 consenting to where your initials are at in the box. <sighs> Here's another one on the same thing. Okay, now this is getting to the point. But he puts it down a little different. He said that he was willing to He's telling my trial attorney this. Yeah. He was willing to cooperate concerning his truck and his boat. We won over the consent form with him, and he agreed to sign them. And then it, later on, it was decided that we weren't going to use his consent to go into his house. We were going to get a search warrant for his residence. And my attorney says, I'm sorry, you did not use his consent? No, we did not. They went and got a search warrant. You know why they went and got a search warrant? Because they used the photograph that they got me naked. They used the photograph of my craft scratches. Try to, they made it, the judge think it, the girl scratched me. That's how they got the search warrant. So the scratches on your arm from the craft, yeah, they right. thought it was the little girl that was kidnapped scratching you. She scratched me. That's what they told the jury too. They showed the pictures of the scratches. They got their own medical examiner. To come in and say, well, uh, I think this photograph is more consistent with the girl scratching you. you follow me? What the crap when crabs scratch you, how does it does it look like fingernails? Uh their medical report, uh, my lawyers got now saying they ain't no way they could have been from crab scratches. But see, I didn't have nobody come in and testify for me on the medical I didn't have my own medical expert. See, they sold me out there again. They only going by what the state. Attorneys, uh, people are saying. Were well, the scratches on your arms, shoulders? Where were the scratches again? They come from crab trap scratches and bushes. See, that morning when I got out there crabbing, a lot of times people rob you traps. They throw them back overboard with their doors ripped open. Sometimes, see, I'm crabbing in the little canal there where I'm at this time of year, where the crabs are real thick. The canal ain't very wide, and sometimes when the people are robbing your traps. They don't like other crabbers, but they'll throw them traps over in the mango bushes. And your buoy and line will be hanging out. That's how you know your traps back in there. So that morning, I was running my traps. When the man had disappeared, I had to get out of my boat twice, go in the bushes and get three crab traps. And I might have got some of them 
scratches. Well, I'm coming out trying to hold them, them traps over my head, trying to get hit in the face with the bushes. And I might have got scratches from them. I don't know. Because when you're when you're going through the weeds like that, you know, you don't know those little things hitting you because you're trying your best to get out of there. Okay.